Well, hey guys, how's it going? Thank you all so much for tuning in and welcome back to the channel. I promised you I'd come out with more weather content and here we are on a Sunday morning slash afternoon doing another weather video for you guys today. And by the way, it was kind of funny. I actually thought today was Saturday. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I was talking to my business partner today and he was like, dude, it's Sunday. And I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> so I, if, if that pretty much sums up my week, I don't know what does. I mean, I just, I don't even know what day it is. I'm sure you guys can relate to that. You don't even know what day it is sometimes. And, and today I think it's with the time change and all that's really throwing me in a loop. Let me know down in the comments below how you're handling daylight savings time because it's pretty clear, uh, maybe not in this video, but at least before I started recording this video, I was very out of it, so um, hopefully you guys are, are doing okay. And I'm not talking about you, Arizona, because it seems as though you guys don't uh, play along with daylight savings time like everybody else. But anyway, this video today is really going to be focused on the upcoming winter weather pattern that we're going to be seeing here in the lower 48. Yes, that's right, I said it, the lower 48. Now, I want to give an honorable mention to the folks that live in the Colorado Rockies. I know a lot of folks forget about you, right? We, we sort of put you off to the side, and whenever we talk about winter weather, you know, you're kind of an afterthought, but then, you know, we'll talk about the Northeast, New England, and the Midwest, and all the more populated areas. But don't worry, we've kept an eye on you. You guys have been getting quite a bit of snow. And as you can see here on the visible satellite, you can actually make out some snowpack here in northwestern Wyoming, even back up towards southwestern Montana. We did have some snowfall over the last 24 to 48 hours, and that has brought some... Uh, Pretty good snowpack to the higher elevations of places like J Jackson Hole, Grand Tarhee, just to name a few of the resorts out there. So again, if you're watching this video, if I have any Wyoming uh, viewers or anybody out in the Northern Rockies, don't worry. We, we are paying attention to you. You have had a winter there thus far in those, those ski resorts, and a rather early one too. For the rest of the country, it's been rather quiet. We haven't seen much winter activity, and, you know, to be quite honest with you, El Nino or La Nina, it's pretty common to not see a lot of our winter activity ramp up for places like the Northeast and the Midwest, and even sometimes the South, until we start to get to December and in January. The unique thing about El Nino is that sometimes we can get winter activities to form uh, around this time, some winter systems, as early as November and Thanksgiving. By the way, I have to mention, too, we did have snowfall, let's not forget, in the lower Great Lakes on Halloween. So this, this kind of thing is, is possible, especially during an El Nino pattern. But I guess the point I'm trying to get at to start this conversation is that, you know, for us to have winter weather this early on typically uh, is rather uncommon. We usually don't get that until we start to get into the holiday season, and we're not there yet. We haven't even celebrated Thanksgiving, so put away the, the Christmas decorations for now. That all said... If you want snow, there are some localities that can expect to get it in the lower 48 beginning tonight and into tomorrow. But I will say that these areas that are expected to get snowfall, it's not going to be a lot of you. It's going to be pretty limited. And this is the exception of the Rockies, too. We're talking about areas outside of the Rockies. So let's actually dive into the conversation now before I go on too many diatribes today. Let's take a look here at the 500 millibar jet. And... Rather similar to what we saw yesterday, if you th you know are watching back or if you saw yesterday's video, we had that upper level ridge that we were talking about out towards the Rockies, and that's going to continue to move off to the east. The other component, though, is we do have an area of high pressure that's out towards the Gulf. A lot of our jet flow to begin the first few days of the work week are going to pretty much be westerly across much of the United States from the West Coast, getting all the way back into the Northeast New England. Many of you are going to be experiencing some well above average temperatures. We also talked about that in yesterday's video. Could see some places be nearly 20 to 30 degrees above average. That's going to be especially true for our folks here in the lower Great Lakes, getting back down towards the South Central United States, as well as the Upper Plains. But remember, we are still technically in a progressive pattern. It does look rather zonal right now with a pretty much dominant westerly flow. Keep in mind, though, that we still have this trough axis that is off the page here in the northern Pacific. And then you have a secondary trough out towards the New England area. This pattern is still progressive, meaning it's still a trough ridge trough. We also use the term meridional. Why do we say meridional? Meridional is referring to when we have dips and, and ebbs and flows in our jet. 
When we have that, that typically leads to fluctuations in terms of temperature and precipitation. It's exactly what we're going to be seeing through this week for a lot of you. Even though many of you are going to be above average with your temperatures, there are going to be some areas that will actually be below average in temperatures. For example, places like far northern reaches of Maine, even towards New Hampshire and Vermont, right near the international border, we are expecting to see some below average temperatures, which should lead to snowfall by the time we get to early this week. And then a secondary opportunity for snowfall likely going into later next week. So if you're in New England and you're like, hey, where's the snow? You're going to be getting in on it. But it's only going to be for folks in the far northern reaches because of this warm air regime that's going to dominate a lot of the country. Meaning your cold air is actually going to be suspended more to the north in, in areas near the international borders as opposed to the lower 48. So, winter is not dead, I promise. I mean, we really haven't even got started with winter technically yet. Um, we really don't get started until December. So, it's okay. If you want snow, eventually you are going to get it, but there are going to be some areas that actually do get an early head start to that. So, let's take a look now. We're going to back out here of College of DuPage, and we're going to head on over to the great old platform of Weatherbell. I, I love these guys. They do phenomenal work over here, by the way. Uh, Link to Weatherbell is in the description below. Great service. You do have to pay for it, but a lot of great products. We're going to go over here now. And the first one that I'm going to start with here is our current snowpack. So what this map does by the IMS is it takes into account both snow cover as well as ice cover. And this actually is a climatological running map. So you can actually go back as far as, say, March of 2020, or in this case, November of 2020, and you can compare it to now and see what the current snowpack looks like. So if we were to compare 2020, which was a La Nina year, a lot of our snowpack was pretty much confined well to the north. We did have some spots in the Rockies with some snowfall, so it's not that uncommon to get snow in October, November. Um, it doesn't happen necessarily all the time, but in this case it did. In comparison though to now, right, take a look at this. More of a concentrated snowpack far south pretty early on. And by the way, this was the 28th of October. If we go a little bit farther ahead here, Look at that, right? Snowpack overall in the Canadian provinces has melted off quite a bit. You do have more of a heavier snowpack out towards the higher elevations of the Rockies by Wyoming and Idaho. Keep in mind, these guys just got snow and are expected to get more of it as we get into this week as well. A lot of that can be attributed to the westerly flow, which we'll talk about here in a second. Remember, when you bring Pacific air over land, that's going to move upslope. And when that does, that air parcel is going to condensate and then it's going to precipitate snow. And remember, as we increase altitude, we're also cooling our temperature. So imagine going up a mountain, you're cooling your temperature, you're decreasing it, but then also your dew point is increasing to where your dew point and temperature are at equilibrium. Now, why is your dew point increasing with height? It's because that Pacific air is moving at the mid-levels. It's being transported. So that's actually helping to produce a saturated profile and thus promote dendritic growth, which essentially translates to snowfall. It's exactly what we've been seeing here in the Rockies and what we will continue to see, as I mentioned, going into this week. We're not going to really spend too much time on that. A lot of the focus is going to be a broad paint drop brush over a lot of the areas that are expected to get snow, but we want to mention you guys as well in the Rockies. That's how we're getting snow. That's how we expect to get it going into this week. But for areas like North Dakota, you also have some snow cover as well. Uh, a lot of this is not as confined and, and strong of a snowpack as we saw back in the previous La Nina years. There still is, though, enough of a snowpack to promote colder air in our northerly latitudes. As that cold air continues to build over time, keep in mind that even if your area is forecasted to be above average in temperatures this year, that doesn't mean you're going to be totally avoidant of the cold air. Eventually, we are going to have some cold air advection regimes move southward into places like the lower 48, uh, where colder air will be present. We could see some below average temperatures at times, and we'll even see that this week, like I mentioned, for places in the far reaches of New England. So let's take a look at some of the models now, and we're going to head on over to the GFS. Um, you know, there's other different renditions you can pull up here. We're going to look at a few different models to sort of 
kind of paint the picture here, if you will. And this is our 500 millibar jet. Keep in mind, the cool thing about this map is it does notate for you the uh, 540 line. So you see this blue line? This is actually our freezing line. So when we talk about precipitation, if we see any demarcation between rain and snow, well, this is gonna highlight it pretty well here for us. And as you can see, look at this strong westerly flow. This is your long wave trough as it continues to move eastward into the west coast. This right here is really strong winds in the mid levels. And this 500 millibar height map is what we refer to as our jet stream. These winds are north of 70 knots. Uh, very strong winds aloft. And again, these are westerly winds. By the way, you see this little jet buckle right here? It's kind of hard to see, but this little like inverted V right here, that's westerly winds that are moving over higher elevations. The GFS is actually picking up on that and showing a little bit of a height perturbation there. And sometimes when you get these height perturbations, you can get precipitation in higher elevations. Not necessarily all the time. You do have to have the, you know, the right other ingredients in place as well. But in a case like this, where you have a trough moving eastward, that's gonna actually help to promote precipitation aloft. Could see some snow showers, maybe in places like California. Um, looks to be rather unlikely just because a lot of our cold air is still farther to the north, despite the fact that we are cooling with height. Uh, really remains to be seen if we're gonna see that. We'll take a look at some of the models here in a second and uh, take a look at the, the precipitation type for that. But in the meantime, again, here's our westerly flow cutting through a lot of the country. Hey, if you're in the Midwest, in the upper Midwest, you guys are seeing some really nice temperatures today. Here's our high pressure that we talked about. Now, this high pressure is going to be critical, and you're going to see why here in a moment. As we go forward in time, watch what happens here. This is our first winter system. we got places in southern Ontario, maybe even getting towards the international border, that could be seeing some snowfall going into late tonight into tomorrow morning to start off the week. I will tell you that I think a lot of the snowfall, as you'll see, is going to be pretty much confined to places like Ontario and north of the Upper Great Lakes. You'll see why in a second. And then as we go forward, that trough is going to continue to move eastward, and look how close that blue line gets to Maine. That's critical, because that could mean snowfall as far north as Bangor and even close to New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. We are expected to see some pretty significant snowfall in places like Ontario, anywhere upwards of, of six to even a foot of snow in that region of the country. But as that's going on, taking us into Tuesday, once again, pretty much westerly flow cutting across the United States. That means that a lot of our temperatures are going to be rather warm. I mean, we're going to be well above average, at least here in Chicago. Uh, you know, like I said, lower Great Lakes, a lot of the country should expect to see temperatures nearly 10 to 20 degrees above average. We're not going to be talking about snowfall so long as this specific jet continues to cut through the large swath of the country. The difference, though, is as we get to Tuesday, that trough that we were talking about out in the Pacific begins to move on land, and we continue to see some pretty strong upper-level divergence in places like Colorado, maybe see some snow showers up in some of those ski resorts, even back towards Wyoming. And as that digs and moves eastward, watch what happens here. That trough is going to be responsible for bringing down this pocket of cold air into places like the upper Midwest of North and South Dakota and even towards Minnesota. But beyond that point, once we get to late next week, we see once again a pretty dynamic system getting towards New England. Again, this cold air is gonna be displaced by this upper level ridge and this troughing feature that digs southeast. And that's gonna allow that cold air to dig as far south as New England. And in the beginning of the week, heading towards the upper Midwest with, with some of those colder temperatures. The critical thing about this, ladies and gentlemen, is right now at the moment, the models are pretty finicky on this blue line, right? This, fr this freezing line, this 540 line. And I'll tell you right now, for folks in, say, Connecticut, Rhode Island, as well as upstate New York, there is the possibility we could see some freezing rain and sleet communica uh, communications, precipitation. Uh, the, the issue with that, though, is because freezing rain and sleet is very susceptible to temperature and very temperature sensitive, I am not going to be really displaying any of those amounts here on this video. I mean, it's, it's really hypothetical at this point. I've seen amounts anywhere between tenth to a few tenths of an inch of freezing rain and sleet. Not really seeing, you know, much uh, value in showing that to you guys now, just because the models are in strong disagreement about the temperature inversion aloft. 
Before I get too ahead of myself, though, because we are going to show some soundings to, to drive home that point, I do want to circle back to one thing that I wanted to show you guys with the first system we're expecting at the beginning of this week, which is the 850 millibar map. So let's pull that up here if I am able to find it. I think it might be a little bit lower. And if not, you know what? Let's try the Euro and let's see if we can pull it up that way. And uh, I think we can look at 850 temperature anomaly. That should be fine. We can roll with that. So it's not going to be showing me the wind barbs, unfortunately, because for some reason I'm not able to pull that up here. Sometimes, uh, you know, these products show up and then sometimes they don't. It's kind of weird. But what I can show you is the 850 temperature anomaly. And as you can see, you know, the 850 is really highlighting our low level jet. Watch what happens as we get into Monday morning. You see this warm air, right? This 850. This is a warm air advective regime. And that gets all the way north into portions of International Falls Duluth. Some of the models have been showing snowfall amounts being towards the north. I think the reason why is because they're very bullish on this warm and moist air advection regime. The reason why we're getting this to advect that far north is because of the high pressure we talked about at the beginning of the video. Remember that high pressure spins clockwise in the northern hemisphere. So that's actually cycling warm and moist air from the Gulf and infecting it northward as far north as Minnesota getting into tomorrow morning. So the big question here is going to be, uh, you know, what type of precipitation are we going to see in Duluth and International Falls by the time we get to Monday? It's going to be a pretty big question to ask. Um, and we'll look at the soundings here in a moment to diagnose that with the first system and also talk about the next system that could be impacting New England and a much larger area of New England late into next week. But keep in mind, I mean, that's really a deterrent here. Before we look at the soundings, let's do one last thing and just pull up some snowfall amounts to really drive home what the current spread is at the moment. And this is going to be from this morning's run. And we're going to use the uh, Kuchera product. And as you can see, a lot of your snowfall, as advertised, is going to be confined mostly to Ontario and into Quebec. And the reason why is because, as I just said, you're going to have a pretty strong warm and moist air advection regime develop later on this afternoon into this evening and that's going to essentially advect warmer temperatures at the surface and actually create an inversion in aloft a warm layer aloft to where areas like minnesota should see very little in the way of snow could still see some wintry precipitation in the form of sleet and freezing rain we can look at that here in a moment but as far as as, as snow is concerned a lot of that colder air is going to be suspended more towards the north in some of those Canadian provinces. We can also take a look here at some of the other models. We'll, of course, look at the NAM. The NAM tends to be somewhat bullish with snowfall totals, keep that in mind, but somewhat in lockstep with the GFS here, once again, with a lot of your snowfall totals being confined to Ontario and Quebec, with some snowfall taking place near the UP of Michigan and up towards northern Minnesota. We also, honorable mention, I told you I'd mention you guys out in the Rockies, Quite a bit of snowfall taking place, a lot of that having to do with that troughing feature off the coast, and that's creating quite a bit of dynamic forcing, and those strong winds in the mid-levels, that Pacific air, is helping to promote snowfall at those higher elevations. We are not done with snow there, and if you're a skier, you certainly want to hit those slopes up towards Wyoming, uh, Idaho, and Montana for some of that fresh powder. But for the rest of us, for the most part, should be rather dry. Not very bullish on these snowfall totals here. It is showing somewhat of a trace to a few tenths of an inch for you guys up in the upper Midwest. Um, really holding my breath on that. And, and, and let me show you exactly why. We're going to end the video here with some soundings. And we're going to take a look at Duluth. Duluth International up here in Minnesota. And this is looking over the next few hours. Keep in mind where your parcel is condensating. It's right here at the 800 millibar level. But notice that our temperatures are just right around freezing. Uh, the problem, though, is we really don't have a dendritic growth zone. I mean, it's just too warm for that. And also, uh, you know, we have a really strong dry slot here as well. We're not really condensating until at least the 300 to 400 millibar level. So what this all means for you guys in Duluth is this is taking a look at a sounding uh, pretty much as of this morning and, and late last night into early morning. And as you can see, we have a pretty potent dry slot and even some dry air down towards the surface. 
It's not typically something we look for when it comes down to snow. Um, and also our, our wind barbs are somewhat all over the board. But as we go into later on into the evening, and actually this takes us into this morning and into tonight, we do get more of, of some of that condensation to take place a little bit lower towards our profile. Keep in mind, we still have a dry slot. And the other thing is, look at that. There is our temperature inversion. Right, And why is that? Well, take a look at what happens with our wind barbs. As we go into this afternoon, look at that. Right, Our temperatures are just too warm at the surface, but they're also warm aloft. Any precipitation we see to start with this system is going to be in the form of rainfall. And then we could get some snow on the back end with some of that cold air that sinks in. Uh, so if we go into, say, tonight... Notice that our temperatures still continue to warm. Now we're talking about temperatures way above freezing, um, anywhere between 5 to 10 degrees Celsius by the time, like I said, we get to tonight. And then as we get towards uh, tomorrow morning, temperatures start to revert back to freezing. Still have that uh, inversion aloft, pretty saturated profile here with some backed winds, uh, not expecting much in the way of, of precipitation there. So basically to summarize this entire sounding as we kind of go back and play it, uh, you notice that our temperatures are really flirting above average. We get a pretty stout temperature inversion or a warm layer aloft to form. That is something you don't want to see when it comes down to snowfall. That means that your, your dendrites or your snowflakes that are forming, your ice crystals that are forming up in the upper levels, they are essentially going to melt into water droplets. And even if this temperature was freezing, it would be in the form of either freezing rain or sleet. And if you look towards, again, the rest of the day going into tomorrow, we have that temperature inversion really lingering around. And at that point, our temperatures at the surface are, are rather warm, near 10 degrees Celsius. And we really don't see them revert back to freezing until by the time we get to late tomorrow night. And at that point, we still have this temperature inversion that is, uh, you know, kind of warm aloft. Uh, but just below freezing. It's it's somewhat of a, a stouter inversion. Um, you get a bit of warming here. If there is going to be any chance of snowfall, it's going to be likely late Tuesday night into the early morning um, of, of Wednesday. And I'm really holding my breath on that because these profiles, this, this inversion shouldn't be warm to where it's going to melt snowflakes. But like I said, there's a very short window for snowfall opportunity. And even then, look at your profile. It's rather dry aloft. So I'm really holding my breath on snow. There could be some opportunity for some, for some uh, yeah, like a dusting of snow or some snowflakes. But I'm really thinking this is going to be more so of a rainfall situation for you guys in Duluth. Not going to be freezing rain or sleep because, again, our temperatures are not going to be dipping below freezing. They're going to be above freezing throughout most of this event. Not really too concerned about you guys. Unless, of course, we were talking about, you know, across the border into places like, you know, uh, Manitoba and, and, and Winnipeg. The other sounding I wanted to look at, too, is our folks in uh, Connecticut. Or actually Maine, I'm sorry, because Maine is actually under the gun for some snow. And that could be interesting. Uh, it should be cold enough to, to produce it. Let's see if we can find Maine here. There you are. And we're going to go over to Bangor and see what our soundings look like. And uh, by the way, if you have any questions about anything we talk about in these videos, go ahead and post them in the comments below. I'm throwing a lot your way today. As we go forward in time into Monday, not expecting much for Monday, but as we get into Tuesday, watch what happens here. Then we start to flirt with some snowfall opportunities, uh, but that next chance really isn't going to be uh, you know, until, I would say, Thursday for, for, for the snowfall. This first event um, really should be more to the north, but the second opportunity we have in association with that next troughing feature may bring some snowfall. These soundings don't go that far out, so um, at least at the moment, it's not looking too bad for you guys. Um, but we will, of course, keep you posted on here. The last thing I wanted to do is show you just the overall snow map going into the rest of today into tomorrow. I know I said the soundings would be the last part of the video, but I did want to show you one more thing here. I forgot to show you the reflectivity map, and I want to show that to you now. So as we go forward into this afternoon, into the evening, we see that snow swath really develop. Our low pressure really begins to deepen because as that moves eastward, that's going to evict warm air from the south thanks to our friend, the high pressure. Uh, so we have high pressure down in the Gulf that's going to evict warm and moist air into this thing. And our colder air 
is suspended more towards northern latitudes. That's how we're getting that band of snow to really develop. And that subsequently is going to deepen our low pressure later on this afternoon into the evening. As we suspected, without even looking at the map, look at what's happening in Minnesota, right? Rainfall, because there's just too much of, of warm air advection to, to move through to where, uh, and also warm air aloft to where you're not going to be seeing much in the way of snowfall. It's just too warm at the surface and aloft. A lot of that being rain. Could have some backwash snow showers, but really holding my breath on that. The main event for snow is truly going to be for places of Ontario and Quebec and back towards Manitoba. Could see some snow in the northern parts of Maine. Didn't get a chance to go over a sounding today, but as we get closer to this event, we'll be sure to really dive deep into that for our folks in, in far northern Maine. And then our next chance at some winter weather beyond the Rockies is going to be this guy up into the uh, Canadian provinces, once again, of Manitoba. That could bring some snowfall even farther south into portions of Vermont, New Hampshire, maybe even Massachusetts and upstate New York by the time we get to late next week. We will keep you posted on all things winter weather over the next few days and pretty much all things weather because if it's not snowing, it certainly feels a little bit more like spring in places like the central United States going into this week. So we'll keep you posted on all of it on this channel. Be sure to like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions and we will see you on the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.